All right, hey everybody, uh, Fear for Fun FPV. I recently picked up one of these Xylo Freakstyle frames and uh, was really impressed and couldn't find too much online about the build of the frame, so I thought I'd throw something together for you. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so in the box, we have four millimeter thick carbon fiber arms. Great thing about these is they are cheap to replace on a GetFP site, GetFPV site. As well, they have five inch, six inch, and seven inch options. So if you're looking for one frame and think you may want to get into some long range or a bigger prop size in the future makes a great option. 240 millimeter battery strap. Battery pad. M3 hardware, so you'll need a two mil driver for these. These are the sides to your FPV camera to protect your camera from being damaged. Hardware, additional hardware, so you got some grommets standoffs, landing pads, and uh, the actual mount for the camera. Sticker set. This is the bottom pad, bottom plate, top plate, and the complete bottom plate. All three of these are two and a half mil thick. Very well cut, nicely uh, Nicely finished. All right, let's get to assembling this. So in here, we'll find some 30 mil M3s, some 15 mil M3s, some six mil and some eight mil. Okay, so this is a simple pinch style frame. We have our bottom plate, which is uh, no top, no bottom, no front, no back. It is not directional. And then our arms. Our arms are basically going to go onto the bottom with this point, those flat pieces touching like that, and the same on the back here, like that. And that's basically what's going to happen underneath that plate. So that's going to be the inside of the frame. This is going to be the bottom. So we're going to go like so. All right. And you can see we're going to have one screw go through the hole and the other one is going to slide through uh, but not it's not a contained hole so in theory you could have one screw through it and this arm would still be able to pivot until it catches that and gets pinched for pinching these together we're going to take the four I believe they're 15 mil And these are going to go through through the top hole, through the arm, and through the body. So here's your press nut. It's not going to go through the press nut. That's what's going to be for our stack. It's going to go through the hole above that, just like that. Now if you want to make it a little bit simpler so it doesn't fight you the whole time, we can take our standoffs now. Let's get those all in the same tray. We can take our standoffs and we can just catch a couple threads on this back side. Just to hold it. Now you don't want it too tight that you won't be able to move your arms around. And we're going to do the same thing. 
All right, for the second arm, what I found worked best is to hold the first arm, pinch it on the plate, so you have this 90 degree flat piece here. I know it's hard to see, black on black, but this piece here, 90 degrees. Our second arm is gonna line up on that and pinch right against it, and then we'll just slide that into place and pinch and I have all three holes lined up and then slide that M3 through and then out the back right. it's not threading into anything but I find it just helps to get it through on that fit just to give it some threading yeah and then same on this one we can just catch the two standoffs. Nice and loose. Okay, so that's now gonna hold that bottom plate into position. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with these front arms. So, line up all three plates through one, through the second, through the other. Make sure our arm is at 90 degrees here. Slide in the last arm. And slide the screw through. Again, might take some manipulation. My wife says I'm a master at that, so I lost it. sure that ends up being flush the inner, the inner piece of the arms we want flush that's gonna go right through about the other side and then we're gonna catch those with standoffs and again I just catch the standoffs loosely at this point I'm not trying to make them too tight that's it for the arms. They're on there, bottom plate, and the piece pinching it. And then now uh, we're going to move on to the 6mm button M3s. And we're just going to catch the rest of the standoffs. So this is the front. Standoffs now on there. Now, obviously, I like to do my build at this point. Uh, we're taking our 
long screws, four of them, and they're going to go through. Now, what I have found is we saw this piece just on the arm, it just slides over this, there's no hole. It um, takes a little bit of work to get that through, threading it helps. If you want to um, file it, if you have a little small file you can put in there, that also helps. But you gotta kind of force your way through the arm. Now we're through. You can see we're caught on that press nut. And this will be for a 30 by 30 stack. Obviously we're just doing the frame build today, not doing a complete build, so I'll just show you one of these. Okay, in, in our large Ziploc accessory pack were these two pieces here. And those are actually, let me show you the one that I have built here. That's what we're actually going to use to mount our camera. Uh, it's smart, I kind of like it. Um, I've done similar things in the past, 3, 3D printing TPU parts. Rather than using the camera's hard mount, um, I kind of prefer it. So we're just going to slide those onto our front pieces. Now, depending on your camera, you may have to slide this on a different way. But I go tabs back and in, and that's just going to slide on and down. Get that focus. That standoff. And the same thing with this one. Make sure their orientation matches. In and down. Alright. Now you have these two pieces for protecting the camera at the side. You can see there's the giant uh, oval here. That oval is going to go at the front and it's cut out so that it goes around that camera mount. So if it's too low or too high, I slide that camera mount up so that this piece can slide into the pre-cut carbon fiber tab like that and you can see, sorry, I did that out of, out of frame but you'll be able to see that this inner piece this inner piece fits in between the oval so it actually is going to hold it in place on that uh, standoff okay. same thing on the other side Oop. jumping carbon fiber First time, oh, knock the other one off. Well, there we go. That's in. Knock the other one off. Back. Great. Yeah, obviously it would be easier to mount your camera first. But again, we're not for the purpose of this video doing that. Okay. All right. Lastly, which I probably won't have to walk you through, is our top plate. Now, front is going to have the tabs for the carbon fiber carbon fiber camera protector. And it's just going to line up like that. 
and we're going to use the other eight um, button head screws that we have. And that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously your battery pad and all that sort of stuff can go on there as well. Um, quite like mine. Um, this is the one that's in the current build right now. Um, as you can see, uh, GetFPV also sells some really nice TPU parts, um, which if you're not into printing your own stuff, is really handy. Um, so this is for my Crossfire Immortal T, and it's got the SMA uh, hole there as well. I also like that uh, because this is a slammed uh, version, that uh, there are secondary mounting holes at the back, which uh, I 3D print. See if I can find it. Um, I just 3D print a nice little holder for my um, Unify Unify HV, which I uh, then pinch at the back, and then I just stick my Crossfire Nano on top of that, and I've got lots of space for that. Um, I believe it also make a really good H, um, HD build. I'll take one of these into uh, our shop uh, and test our uh, test the uh, air unit on there. I don't have one at home to do that. Uh, and then also they sell these nice uh, pre-made, everyone's got them, motor guards. Um, I did take a quick look at Thingiverse. I did see that there were some files on there for Freakstyle. Uh, I haven't done a print on them yet uh, to see if they fit nicely. But uh, if you're not a designer, can't make your own STLs, uh, there are some resources out there for Freakstyle. Um, anything else I need to say about that? I don't think so. Um, really nice frame, really happy with it. Can't wait to get out and really bash it. Uh, put it through, through its paces and see um, see how it holds up on the long term. But um, build quality I'm really, really happy with, especially for the price point of uh, $40. Can't go wrong. So that will do it for uh, this short video on the build of the Freakstyle Slammed from Xylo, uh, available through getfpv.com. Um, if you tra trace back my uh, YouTube channel, you'll see I don't have any YouTube videos on this channel. This is uh, the first video for Free For Fun FPV. Um, I may transfer some videos over from one of my other accounts, um, but for the most part, this will be a new channel and um, might get involved with some of my uh, film work that I do, uh, heavy lift drones and, and other production equipment that we provide to the film industry, uh, mostly drone related, but not all. Um, well, yeah, so stay tuned, see what else um, I'm going to pop out there. I'm, I don't really know yet where I want to want to take this channel completely, but uh, stay tuned. Have a great day.